thank you very much for the organizers. Um, it's a uh, very long title. Um, what I have in mind today is to um, break my presentation into three parts. First of all, I would like to uh, sort of give you a background as to where we are in the uh, ongoing Cyprus negotiations, or what I call it, uh, the zombie, which is half dead, half alive. Um, the second part of my um, uh, speech is going to focus on public opinion poll results that we have been conducting on both sides of the island since 2009. Um, it is known that if a solution is going to be uh, reached by the two leaders, um, that solution is going to be put to simultaneous separate referendum on both sides of the island. That's why what people think about the um, uh, negotiation issues, I think, uh, 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 is, is very important. That's why we are going to touch upon some of the uh, uh, public opinion poll results. And finally, the third part of my presentation, I would try to speculate on future scenarios in Cyprus and hopefully provoke you a little bit so that you can um, ask questions. Um, I don't have to sort of... Uh, um, uh, uh, remind you, but um, in 2004 we had a referendum in Cyprus. Um, a um, unfortunately a um, a very important opportunity which was lost. Um, we have a result which is um, um, accepted by majority of the Turkish Cypriots, but rejected by majority of the Greek Cypriots. Um, the what I call the um, the Mr. Never effect. I call Tassos Papadopoulos late Tassos Papadopoulos Mr. Never because Mr. Denktash was regarded as Mr. No by the international community, who was sort of saying no to uh, most of the proposals on the international uh, community. But anyways, we move on. After 2004, we had almost uh, like four years of nothing in Cyprus. Then there was an election in the Greek Cypriot community. A new leader was elected uh, by the name uh, Dimitris Christofias, who within a week or so after he was elected, uh, agreed with the Turkish Cypriot leader Talat uh, to establish um, six working groups um, in order to deal with the substantive issues of the Cyprus problem and seven technical committees to deal with the day-to-day -day problems of the Cyprus problem. Now, these are the uh, six issues, that the six important dossiers that the uh, working group started. Now, personally, I was a member of governance and power sharing um, working group. There were four Turkey Cypriot and four Greek Cypriots who started the uh, f first phase of the negotiations, preparing the ground for, f for future uh, leaders level face-to-face full-fledged negotiations. So from April 2008 until uh, the end of summer, we prepared the ground. We basically discussed in all these um, working groups what are the positions of Turkish Cypriots and what are the positions of Greek Cypriots. Do we have areas of convergence, agreements. If that's the case, we would write them in one color. And when it comes to the areas of disagreement, we would write them in two colors. Now, being an eccentric academic, uh, at the end I was sort of suggesting that um, whenever we have disagreement, the Turkish uh, Cypriot position should be written in blue and the Greek Cypriot position should be written in red. And the areas of agreement or convergence should be written in, in black. Everybody disagreed. <laughs> you know why? Because even the colors, red and blue, were uh, associated with the respective uh, communities. So the, at the end, what I proposed was not picked up. Anyways, um, we produce a 36 page of report, half of it was written in black, meaning areas of agreement, 
uh, more than half maybe in a way. And then the rest, when it is uh, the Greek Cypriot position, it was written in blue and um, the Turkish Cypriot position in red. We gave that to the two leaders uh, in September 2008. Their idea was to get rid of the blue and the red and increase the black. And finally, if the whole document was written in black, you got yourself the future constitution of the United Cyprus Republic, by and large, at least in our uh, working group governance and power sharing. Now, what happened? What happened was, um, since 2008, uh, the two leaders met more than 100 times. Um, here, the three areas, governance and power sharing, economic matters, European Union matters, we have a lot of um, progress, a lot of agreements. Though in governance and power sharing there is one sticking issue which is still uh, not resolved. It is about the executive branch. What type of executive branch we are going to have. And currently the two sides are, 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 are sort of stuck to the mud on cross-voting, a method of uh, electing the uh, future president and, and vice president, as well as rotation, what type of rotational presidency it's going to have. Economic matters and European Union matters, these are by and large um, uh, resolved with only a couple of sticking issues there, which are not really uh, that important. Now, the three other areas where we have little progress, we have the property issue, meaning how are we going to solve the property issue in the future? Now, the two sides, at least in practice, they agreed that the property issue in the future will be resolved by three methods. One, restitution of the property, meaning giving it back to its original owner whenever it is possible. Second, um, exchange of the property. For example, a Greek Cypriot might say, I don't want my property in Kyrenia. Instead, give me a piece of Turkish property in Larnaca, for example. So that's called exchange. And some properties could be exchanged. And the third method is, I don't want any property. Just show me the money. That is compensation, right? Um, but the, the sticking issue here is that the Greek Cypriot side insists that the right to choose whether you want restitution, exchange, or compensation, should be given to the original owner of the property. While the Turkish Cypriots are saying that there is danger there, because if most of the Greek Cypriots want restitution, then we might end up having a North Cyprus in the future federation, which will be flooded by Greek Cypriots and will lose our majority there. So there is this by zonality concerns on the, on the part of Turkish Cypriots. I think the middle point here that the two sides are going to agree at the end uh, is that um, properties will be categorized, whether it is first residence, second residence, holiday house, simple plot, a plot which on it something was built, or uh, public proper, uh, public uh, utility or public uh, um, good related thing was built on it, hospital, schools, whatever. I don't want to bore you with all these details, but properties will be categorized and certain properties could be reinstituted, certain properties can be exchanged and certain will be uh, 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 compensated. Anyways, um, the territory is of course a sort of linked issue, meaning how much land Turkey Cypriots will yield to the Greek Cypriots, meaning where will be the f current, let's say, um, dividing line, which will be in a future solution, an administrative line, where that line is going to cross. It will cross probably somewhere northern, more northern part of where it is today, because it is a common understanding that the Turkey Cypriots will give up part of the territory in order to get something else uh, from the other dossiers. And security and guarantees, final issue, uh, almost nothing has been done on it because uh, whether we like it or not, that's an issue that the two Cypriot sites cannot and um, legally uh, 
they are not having the competence to solve by themselves. Because whether we like it or not, there are three guarantor powers in Cyprus, Greece, Turkey, and United Kingdom, who have the rights as well as the responsibility for four provisions in Cyprus, security, independence, territorial integrity, and the constitutional order to preserve these. Now, if you ask me uh, the track records of the guarantor powers, that's another separate um, conference itself that we can engage in the future. Now, um, where are we today with regard to, uh, we are in a sort of soft impasse, maybe not so soft. Um, the uh, Greek Cypriot leader, Mr. Christofias, a few months ago, I think a month and a half or something ago, announced that he's not going to run for president in the upcoming election, which is in February 2013. He said that um, I don't see any hope that the Cyprus problem can be resolved in a short time. So, and that was my promise when I, um, uh, I, I was nominated to become the, uh, the president. So he says, I'm not going to run. Which means that until the new person is elected, he's a uh, lame duck. You cannot really uh, negotiate any substantive issues with Mr. Christofias now, whether we like it or not. All right? So we know that we should not be expecting any breakthrough in the Cyprus negotiations until, let's say, March 2013. So what's going to happen to the zombie, meaning the peace, the official peace process? Should we just also uh, flush it down the drain? Um, there is a saying, I think, in English, don't throw the baby with the um, baby water, I think. Uh, bath water. I think that the, uh, the already um, impasse negotiation process should be preserved because a lot has been um, achieved in the last four years. Though it was very slow, but a lot has been achieved that, that, that should be preserved, in my opinion. So I, I hope that, and, and we have been talking to many people, uh, including the UN and whatnot, on the ground, that the, uh, the, the next several months should be used for confidence-building measures between the two communities, uh, where there is this lack of trust between the two sides. It's, it's not something new, but I think that that's the best way to go. Um, what does people say about some of the important issues of the Cyprus problem? Now, um, as I said, we have been conducting these um, island-wide public opinion polls. We meaning a uh, initiative called Cyprus 2015. I was uh, one of the uh, founding co-directors or the Turkey Cypriot director of this, which is funded, uh, supported mostly by United Nations Development Program. What we are doing is we are doing participatory polling, which means that we do not just sit down and um, prepare questionnaires out of blue, but we interview all the stakeholders, including the two leaders and their teams, as well as the UN people on the ground. And we ask questions on those topics that the two leaders are either negotiating or will negotiate in the future. So that we are very much synchronized with the ongoing peace process. That's why, for example, this is from uh, Secretary General's um, report, Ban Ki-moon's report to um, the Security Council. He talks about recent polls. That's us. But he didn't say. That's a shame. It was 2010. Next, again, 2010, says again, polls. Um, then, 2011, latest polls, and thank God, now he talks about Cyprus 2015 in his report to the Security Council, which makes us um, proud, but at the same time that we feel useful that we are actually doing something um, 
uh, important. And then his latest report, which came out um, just a couple of months ago, he also talks about us and uh, our contribution. 